like to bring up Billy Freeman, WL4B. Sure, thank you. Um, those of you who don't know me, my name is Billy Freeman. Um, I am retired from Memphis Fire after 28 years, but I was also on, I was also on, I don't want to talk about that. I, uh, I spent 25 years on the FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Teams, mostly as a communications uh, specialist, but um, I, I was pretty much cross trained in all the disciplines. Um, Part of it was on Tennessee Task Force One, which is hosted by uh, Memphis Fire, and also on uh, Incident Support Team, which is the next level up, the liaison level for the teams. I have uh, 31 national deployments, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, terrorism. Um, and so I always kept notes when I was on deployment, I had a page in my notebook for things thought is what I called it. And it was always about, because I was always upgrading my equipment and, and processes and you know just different things. And so uh, these, these personal lessons came out. Um, one of the things I've done over the years is, is um, there are some courses out there called the uh, the Homeland Security courses are called All Hazards Communications Unit, Unit Leader or Technician. And, and I helped write those courses and I used to teach them. And those of, of y'all that have been, Joe has been, uh, went, took the Commel course. If you've been to it, you've, you'll see some of these that I put in there. I say all that to say because it, these are not things I read in the book, these are things that actually have experience. Um, so we're going to talk about comfort, nutrition, physical, mental health, hygiene, and safety. So comfort is uh, an interesting concept in a disaster zone. Um, this is like a five-star hotel to a responder. Now I'm going to touch on a lot of things that will cross over because most of us won't won't deploy to these kind of events, won't, won't be out there tip the spear. But a lot of these things were experienced and I saw being experienced by people that were impacted by the disaster. Evacuees, particularly. And so a lot of these things can cross over if you ever unfortunately find yourself in that position. So there, like I said, this is a five-star hotel as far as we were concerned. If you ever get in this situation, the far back corner, one of the best places to be, <laughs> less traffic, and preferably close to the bathroom. Um, most of the time, this is what we lived in. It's called Western Shelters. Um, this is down in southern Louisiana in the summertime for Hurricane something. Um, and uh, Riga. And so that, that tarmac out there, we're on the Air Force Base, that tarmac out there was like 100 degrees. I mean, the temperature's like 100 degrees, that tarmac's like 150 degrees. So you've got to learn, you know, all those pieces. <clears throat> A lot of the times, especially when I was in the, on the management team, I was living in my car. This is my friend Tim, he and I were down in the Fort Arthur, Texas. For a hurricane, and it would be nice to have a rental car with some size. That's a PT Cruiser. So there's, <laughs> not, there's not a lot of room there. The most of the stuff is taken up by a gear in the back. But you see, he's, he's got a heat pack warming up MRE. If we got a case of MRE, a couple of cases of MREs, a couple of cases of water. That's the important part. But you live in that austere environment. And once again, even a person that's impacted by that can, can live in that. I've given cases of MREs to people before they have anything else. Because there's always, always, 110% of the time, there's always somebody that rides a hurricane, and they will always say, I'll never do that again. Come across those. But we give them food. So the point being is <clears throat> you, you learn to adapt to that. And then there's catch a quick nap. 
I said this when John was doing his last last month about the the, the outside case of an MRE, a case of MREs. <laughs> the, the cardboard is waterproof. <laughs> Got a little military. I was in the army for 10 years. Got a little military. So nice. Like this is a few hours after landfall when we pushed into Katrina. So we try to get some, get a rest, get some rest. So I carry a couple of things with you. These are the kind of packaging that you could have with for your own in case you had to eat that. We're not talking about bug out bags and all that stuff. We're talking about just preparedness for. Ice storms and wind storms that we have, and, you know, those things where you may end up being in a shelter. So I carry a thin, a thin blanket and a thin sleeping bag. So it's a fleece sleeping bag, it's packs up really small, but those two together, I can usually, because surprisingly, you're in this room right here as a shelter. I guarantee you that air conditioner right here will freeze you out. If you're fortunate enough to have an air conditioner. And, and, and by the way, not everything happens in the summertime. I have a little small self inflating mattress, a small pillow, and a white noise device or earplugs. You can get an app on your phone for white noise, but you better be having it plugged up because it will drain it down. Because I spent 28 years in the fire station listening to firemen snore. <laughs> and I'm with, with, we used to go in the old, old open bed halls, they called them. There was about 20 different fans running in there for white noise. <clears throat> so, same thing. Clothing is another piece. So, in that kind of environment, it's very difficult to keep clothes washed. It's almost, it's almost impossible to get soap washing done. For clothes. So I've washed my clothes many times in a rainstorm or somebody, a fire truck turned on a nozzle and sprayed some water down on us and just let it wash out. Obviously, that's the summertime. Um, but you, but we, we evolved into quick drying clothes because I don't, you can't carry the kitchen sink with you. I have, have four, four changes. Four uniform changes that include socks and tops and bottoms and fenders and outers, everything. And that's just for summertime, not for wintertime. So you, you know, rips up nylon and warm in the military uh, that are thinner, but but have the rip stop in them so they're tougher and they dry easier. All you know, all those type of things. Everything I put in my kits goes in a plastic bag. I only use off-the-shelf items. There are all kinds of specialty items out there, bags that you can do this, whether you do that. I buy off-the-shelf. You can buy Ziploc bags anywhere from a pint size to a two and a half gallon size. All my uniforms go in them. Everything goes in them. It's not just to keep them dry. It's so I can inventory things. I can look at a bag and say, okay, I know that is this and that is this. I'm going to pack them in and pack vertically. Put a little, I don't sleeve them up all the way because when I'm packing my bags, it lets the air out of them and everything gets in there, it will seal them up and dry them up. I do the same thing with tools. All my tools, my meters, everything that's in my toolkits are in plastic bags so I can get the things. Like, that's for me tell my colleagues that. It, they, <laughs> But I, I use the plastic bags because I know that if I tear up one, they're easy to get. Uh, flashlights. Talked about this on uh, Joe did uh, on I mean uh, John did on his. <clears throat> so I carry a headlamp, and I always have one that's got red red on it because if I'm in that five star hotel, I don't want a bright light bothering somebody. When I'm walking to the wherever, I carry a handheld. Usually, I have a I have a fire firefighter's light. It's got a nine degree angle on it. It's pretty bright. Um, but I'll, I'll, I've got some hand, got a hand for for brightness, really bright. 
And then extra small when we carry lanterns, where uh, he's always talking, I've always got one hanging off my lantern, very small. <clears throat> one, what's the one common denominator? Brian, when I talked about flashlights and stuff, same size batteries. Same size batteries. Now I got the same batteries. In this case, I'm I'm in I'm in double A's right now. Uh, I'm sorry, triple A's right now. Um, things have gotten smaller. The only things everything's LED now. So yes. If you can keep your equipment consistent, it's easy. Once again, LED, uh, AAA batteries off the shelf. Money. So even though it's, it's, we live in this flash your, flash your car society, I have yet, and I always use this example, I have yet to see there not be a liquor store open taking cash. <laughs> and like, you know, and I'm, I got pictures of it all the time. But, but having a little cash, some small bills, some coins, might help you. Although nowadays, uh, I, I, I probably can't find a vending machine that's not powered. But you may be going to a convenience store and get something. It's just, it's just those little things. Okay, nutrition, whatever that means on the, on these kind of environment, but it's, it's, it seems to be the right words. So, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite things to tell. That's a pretty good looking pot of spaghetti. I have gone into places, shelters, EOCs, uh, emergency operations centers, Command post where all this food is homemade food has been brought to the location. I don't eat homemade food. Well, let me answer it. It's not because I'm that I've seen people get sick, it's not because of something that I think is malicious, although it could be in some certain circumstances. I don't eat it because I don't know who's who's done it. That Sounds a little harsh, but I'd rather eat MRE than be laid out with something. And I've, I've seen it. Speaking of MREs, mm. how's that one look? <laughs> I come through and say, I come through the evolution in the Army, sea rations, <laughs> and then the first evolution of MREs, which are freeze dried, and then the current evolution of the MREs now. It's clear to do MREs. Huh? Two MREs have been through it. Yeah. yeah. I ate sea rations that were dated 1953. So. <laughs> so you were like 30 when you ate them? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, quite frankly, MREs are, are they're not bad. But I recommend if you are a hot sauce eater, a lot of the military MREs come with Tabasco. I'm not a fan of Tabasco, so I carry my own MREs. Guess what I put it in? <laughs> in one of my spare boots. So it doesn't get knocked around. Some people like, you know, different seasonings. Bring some of your favorite things. It's usually not hard to get pepper and salt, but I always have some of those too, as well as some plastic utensil kits. You know how you get them at a takeout? Well, so they already have a utility kit. But they they have a, they they'll have a spoon or a spork. <laughs> but do they have the salt, and pepper, and yeah? Usually that, that that accessory pack is in there. But you may not be getting any more. You may be, you know, opening a can of buying sausages or something. Um, so always have a two or three packs of those, and because they've got everything in salt, pepper, knife, fork, spoon. That's actually cheese and rice. It's, it's actually really pretty good. But um, there's a heating pack to them that you have to know how. I was on the Mississippi River with the Coast Guard trying to show them how to use the heat pack. And if you put too much water in there, it will almost blow up. And he had filled it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I had fun with them. If you're lucky, 
I will eat from certain people that are cooking. They're definitely one of them. They were the first, that truck right there was the first people to feed us at the Pentagon when we went and we responded to the Pentagon after 9 11. Great, <clears throat> right? but these are kind of small. They call it canteens. And, uh, Red Cross is there too, but they're, they're the ones that have fed me most now over the year. Well, rapidly, but it's very small. They'll have snacks and drinks and that kind of thing. Which, by the way, you keep you some, some, some snacks, and I'll talk about that in a second. The next group is these people are awesome. Southern Baptist Convention Disaster Relief. They're all, Tennessee's got them, North Carolina, they're all over the place. And you look for that red, that yellow shirt, or at least a yellow hat, and they are what they are, just like the, just like the uh, Salvation Army. They are certified food preparers. They follow all the rules that are, that are required, just like a restaurant would. And so they can cook mass quantities of food. They're incredible. They will feed you physically and spiritually if you need to. They always have a few chaplains on there with them. And so just a just an incredible group of folks. So hydration. Obviously, it's very important to stay hydrated. The three to one, anybody got an idea what that means? Which one's which? Water three gator in bond. Why do you need to even throw a gator in there? Black for life. Black for life. If you drink too much water, you can flush your electrolytes right out of your body. I've seen it happen several times. So I always have Gatorade on hand. I carry packets of it. I electrolyte packets. There's a lot of them out there now. Um, also, too, you will see, like Anheuser Busch is big for doing it. But if it's big enough. They will do a couple of runs of water only in a, in a beer can. It's a, not doesn't look like a bush. It looks like a bush can, but it's still. They'll do a water only run. Problem is, is what? The water is distilled. You ever drink distilled water? It's got no taste. Water does have a taste. It's got minerals and stuff in it. So that's where the packet comes in. I've lived on water, uh, water and Gatorade and beef jerky for days. I always, always get me a big old bag of beef jerky. I've lived on it for days. Because in, in our environment, we're running so hard, um, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't stop and get anything to eat. Same thing with if you're in that environment, you've got to go to a shelter or something. You need to be able to be able to, you know, have a snack or something. Also, hard candy. I love chocolate, but it doesn't travel very well. But hard candy, something sweet. M&M's. Yeah, you know, you know, they, they don't melt. That's crap. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I only drink, I, now this is me, but I only drink from a can or a bottle on uh, top of it, you know. I don't drink out of a fountain. I don't drink out of a garden hose. I don't drink out of a... Only because I've seen too many times water systems have been compromised during a disaster. That's just me. Okay, bring some pokey bait. Who knows what pokey bait is? I do. Let me hear it. Tell me, guys. Off the canteen. Yeah. So, so... Junk. 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 You, you bring some... Items that are different than what you're eating. Now, let me tell you something about MREs. You eat MREs a few times, that's going to get a Navy. <laughs> you eat MREs for a few days or a few weeks, you're going to go, your gut's going to go through some changes. There's a, they're notorious for constipating you. So, but they'll, you'll evolve. Uh, and, 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 you know they'll keep you they'll keep you moving forward, but it's nice to have some something else to to you know some help you back to jump jump back on. Check out food dates that kind of stuff. I talked about eating utensils, physical and mental health. 
So this is my partner. Uh, we were down in Punta Gorda, it's 105 degrees. He's from, he's from Pennsylvania. What do you think that's what he was doing to him? Well, you can look at his face. We've been living in that truck. Three of us have been living in that truck, four to one, service truck, for about three or four days. Um, we're putting a system up to hop, uh, an 80 mile hop from Punta Gorda to Lakeland, Florida. And um, Bob said, he said, I said, Bob, get in the truck. Because he's red. He said, I just got this one more task. It's a famous last words. Mm -hmm. One more thing. I just got this. I said, and then we'll be done. We can go back. I said, well, that's incentive. So we got a, I don't know, such a 10 or 15 pound bag of ice and wrapped it around him. I used this as an example. How can you cool somebody down quickly? <laughs> so we do all the fire departments. The guys from the guys from up north and the different places that don't deal with the heat. And how do y'all deal with that? So if you can get an ice chest and water and a towel, and you you get that towel, ice cold in that water, and wrap it around that neck on, on those carotid arteries, and it will it will drop your core temperature rapidly. Not enough to hurt you, but enough to keep you alive. And so that's what I was doing. I, it looks funny, but it was actually what, what I was doing. I, I was trying to keep it going. We got it done, and we had it back for, for another mission. Huh? Please, uh, what's the word? <laughs> no, I like it. Of course, it's not always hot. <laughs> so this is a Tennessee boy in a Fargo, North Dakota blizzard. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's the first week of April. You know, and so we're like, we still don't, we're still running our mission up there for a flood. We're up there for a flood. <laughs> the Red River didn't stop flooding. Um, so anyway, the point thing is, you have to prepare for where that could be. You know, how do you, how are you going to get from your house to the shelter in that? So you you, know, you have to think about it, and and you know we have good snow. That was 18 inches in 12 hours, with 35 mile an hour sustained winds and quarter mile visibility. That is a blizzard. Physical. I was fixing to make my second trip up that stairwell in the dark, 24 stories. We were putting the system up on top of the Galleria building right at the Lake Train Bridge for the Katrina mission. Yeah, I looked a little rough right there. My buddies took it and said, you look, you look like you're about to fall. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I learned my first three years on the fire department, I was on the high rest team. I learned how to climb stairs. One step at a time, hand on the rail. One step at a time, hand on the rail. Right hand would you use there? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and pitch black dark. So I'm going to talk about mental health. And I'm not going to drag on to it much. But you don't have to be a responder to be impacted by something, by an event. This is more Oklahoma, about 10 years ago, F5 ripped through there. 25 people died, seven children died in that uh, Plaza Towers in Old Richard's Gulf. So, uh, now, we were not first in line on that because we had driven from Memphis. The point being is you don't have to see a dead person to be impacted by death. You don't have to be through rubble searching for someone to be impacted by disaster, destruction. You just have to, if there's an emotional aspect for you, if you, obviously, standing on the ground looking at something is much more impactful than, than seeing it on TV. But if you're having to, if you're one of the ones who's being evacuated from this area, there's there's a there's a 
They, sometimes, not sometimes, you can unsee what you saw. I can attest to that from 30 years of being too much at the crowd. So you have to watch out for yourself and each other because it's very important. Uh, yeah, that's enough of that. Make sure that you have your medications, either on the counter or your prescription medications, and we provide the ambulance for the fire department. I love the, the people that I walked in the door and, and they either handed me their plastic bag of their drugs or they handed me a sheet when they printed out because I didn't have to ask for it. Um, so, but you know, you're doing that. You rest when you can, and that's that's an as an evacuee. You you're so wound up. People are so wound up. They don't know what their life's upside down. I I, I use the analogy, and I, I never forget. <clears throat> I defend the people in New Orleans that were impacted because they couldn't leave. It cost. Today, I always use the, the number of $1,000 a week, but it's probably more like $2,000 a week now to stay in a hotel and feed yourself from a restaurant. And who's got that? The average person doesn't have that. And so that's that's where we look at, you know, how that, that whole thing plays out. Um Make sure you're getting as much rest as you can. Most people didn't get any rest when they were riding it out in the, in the Superdome or when that when they were displaced from the tornado. They didn't get rest. And the responders are sure not getting any rest. You're, you're, you're going on, you know, I learned, what we learned in the Army? Sleep any, any minute that you can get out. <laughs> you know, if I can sleep 10, 15 minutes, that's power down. Let's go. Um, social media. <laughs> Not a, I, I don't get near social media when I'm out because I don't want to see misinformation or disinformation about what I'm doing out there from somebody that ain't even in the same continent I'm on. And so I stay away from. It. We have a policy. Female has a policy about about posting and those kind of things, but I stay off of it because I, I, I'll use the example. I was I went to Maui from the Lahaina Fire, and some of the crap that was going on was incredible. I'm standing on the ground going, "Well, that's a lie." So it's best for your mental health to not be caught up in this crap. We, I mean, right to you. I, I, I didn't I didn't see the news for now. I mean, I'm at the Pentagon. For 9/11, and I didn't watch the news. We, nobody, none of us watched the news for for nine days, ten days, because it was too emotional. I lost friends at the World Trade Center. Probably. It was too emotional. I had mission to do. Same thing if you're uh, a civilian. There's always going to be a Facebook group set up that controls that and only provides the information to you related to. What's going on with the with the evacuation? So be, be looking. Sorry, got on my soapbox. Pick up small first aid kit, glycer pads, multivitamins. I can I can attest. Probably one of the best diets you ever get on. <laughs> it's working and being hungry. I would always lose. I don't have a lot of space anyway. I, I would always lose ten or fifteen pounds. Uh, almost every almost every summer. Hygiene, this is one of my favorite ones. Everybody knows what that is, right? We know from the pandemic what we learned in the pandemic. This picture right here is like <coughs> 15 years old. I've been using it in PowerPoint for years because yes, I rode the ambulance and there were times that I looked over and blood's dripping off the elbows. So I became a, a germaphobe. Um, so I always carried that stuff with me. Now, 
What is it? What what's in here? Pups? Negative. I always have somebody to say that. I don't use baby wipes because I use these to shower. I have a term for it, but I'm not going to use it here. <laughs> the blank bath. Water wipes. Baby wipes have usually have lanolin or aloe or something in it. I'm trying to clean the stickiness off of me. And the baby wipes put the stickiness back on. You can't, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get springtime fresh, fresh clean, but I want to be able to be not sticky so I can sleep somewhere. And so that's water wipes. But I discovered them a long time ago. And they're they're my kids, all of my grandkids, they they only use water wipes on them just because that's what they chose to do. So a little weirdness there, but but it but when you're stepped down to your underwear and you're wiping yourself down with a pad or a bottle of water and a washcloth, that's your bath. By the way, clothes. There's a there's an old joke in the in the down there in that world. You can wear your underwear for four days. <laughs> Move them from front to back and inside and outside. That looks like a lot of board problems. I was set up for 500 people overnight. We went to, we got 2,500 additional people, responders, mostly military, came in there. I don't know if you've ever been in a port body that's full, but they're, <laughs> but they're not pleasant, are they? Well, don't well, you need one that falls over. <laughs> no, I'm out. <laughs> Usually it's somebody pushing them. But we were in that Katrina and it was hard to get hard to get things down there to get it done. It took a minute to get it done. So you I, I, an evacuation site. They have plenty of those things that unless they're maintained, you know, it can make very stressful for you. Of course, we carry these. If you ever run across one of these, I'm gonna give you a little Spoon here. This is a one person pack. One person uses it. You got to go through your process. You line the box, do your business, pull it out, zip it up so it starts walking. Not just keep filling that one up. <laughs> People can be pigs, I'm sorry. Probably me included. So when we were at uh, Field Day, mm -hmm. well, we got one right over there. Got a couple of them right over there. I don't ever drink out of one of those out on an incident without first taking a bottle of water out. I want to get a Gatorade. I take a bottle of water too. Any idea what I'm fixing to do? Right. Wash, 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 wash the dust. That comes from looking down in the into an ice chest at a in a location with blood and water. Yeah. Just was what it was. So I don't ever do that anymore. Other than we wash it off. It's too easy. By the way, that may have been what was in that <laughs> chest for a few hours before that. I just picked that off the end of the <laughs> Nobody clean stuff. Fingernails. What, is, what am I talking about fingernails? What am I talking about fingernails? Keep it short. And yes, but. Keep it clean. Yes, but. It's a good time to quit chewing your fingernails. <laughs> See, I want you to go, ooh. Absolutely. And that could be in a shelter, too. We know people don't do what they're supposed to do. He, take them with you. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Where's my doctor's at? What, where's one of them? Brush them. 
for Russia, one of the one of the direct passable germs in your body is is your gums, your mouth, brushing your teeth. What does PPE stand for? Come on, pandemic. Somebody knew what that was five years ago. What would be some personal protective equipment for hatching? Gloves. Gloves. Rubber gloves. Face mask. Keep going with it. Five X sleep. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to see something here in a minute. I don't know many people got time to lose, but truck load. High protection. High uh, protection. If anything nasty flies in. Absolutely. High protection. To all those pieces um, to keep you safe. Because you're going to be tied up. I go to the, back to the shelter again. You saw how close everybody was sleeping in that in that shelter. <clears throat> what is gross decon? Uh, actually, actually not stripping. Gross decon, decontamination. Gross decon means cleaning off before you go into what's called full decon. So you can do, we, we do, we do it uh, heavily on boots, the dog's foot, feet, paws. We do it, we do it like that because you're, those right there, your feet are always getting contaminated. You may not have crawled through anything because your feet are going so, so that's what you're looking at. Now, uh, essentially, on the fire grounds, gross decontamination is I walk up in my full turnout gear and they spray me down with a hose, knock all the external stuff off. But that's but that's what gross decontamination means. You get you get that because you don't want to rag in the dirt. Rag in the dirt. All right, last one, safety. There's your time X6. So the, if you find yourself in this right here, mm -hmm. then you're on the tip, tip, tip of the spear. That's the Pentagon. That's what we were wearing to work inside the Pentagon to, to shore up the Pentagon. Um, and, and I don't know if you've ever worn one of these respirators, but you can still you can still smell things through them. Just stay with that. Um, but you, you, you. What, what are we looking for now? We're, now we're talking about working PPE. What are we talking about? Hazards. You know all those pieces um, and respirator. You know most people don't have respirators. Most people. Um, We just finished Bob had taken the ice off his neck. We were headed back. It was 40 miles away. It was with this cell site. We had dropped off equipment to let a climbing crew that was going up there to straighten some microwave dots, antennas. We, they put a, they put a, we put a, a, a UHF antenna up for our repeater and a repeater in their site. Typical Central Florida summer day storms. One of the guys was from Riverside, California, and then Bob was from Pennsylvania, and, and, and Jeff from Riverside said, I don't see as much rain that goes on here in an hour as I, in, in a whole year in Riverside. So anyway, we're standing there, we're taking Hollywood pictures, and it almost a second after that picture was taken, lightning struck it. <laughs> lightning struck that freaking tower. Oh, I couldn't get low enough. By then it was too late. <laughs> but you got to be aware of those kind of things. You know, we were just not our own business. Fortunately, that tower probably gets struck six times a day. That's a pretty good ground system. I <laughs> so we we flew in on this mission, Poitras downriver from Katrina, set up a. A, a base camp, we see a couple of antenna, then we got, you know, we're, we're operating out there, we got search and rescue teams out. About three, two, three days before this, it was underwater, it was 20 miles from the coast, it was underwater. I mean, there were snapper, this is a school, a school part, a school uh, playground, there were snapper all over the school playground. <laughs> where they 
flooded it. It was like eight or ten foot of water in that town. So we were doing searches and stuff. Minding our own business, wasn't too bad. Had some shade over us, you know, we're doing our thing. This is one of the most interesting things I've, I've seen, and I saw this in, at Katrina, is all these stray dogs, because these people literally got out and dogs got left, and all these dogs started showing up. And, I mean, dozens and dozens of dogs. So most of them, I mean, they were all, you know, pretty nice and friendly and carried on, you know. I say all that to say, few days later I was on the ground in New Orleans and I've never seen dogs pack up stray dogs that were pets four or five days before that pack up into hunting packs and they were hunting won't go into more details but that was pretty damn scary to see right there. We're not talking about chihuahuas either. We're talking about chows and pit bulls and, you know, the, the yeah. apex predator dogs. They turned quick. It was pretty interesting to see. Um, so I say all that to say, think about that. That kind of stuff goes on. <laughs> Look at that beast. That was found about on just on just outside that that playground. Oh uh, no, it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big handed rattlesnake. There's the rattle right there. You step over that big one. And then we're in Port Arthur, Texas. Oh, I didn't take the picture, but I've seen more alligators. We used to get Florida fame fame and get Florida game and fish to run with us. Just to protect us from the alligators. I didn't take the picture, but I was in the boat that got me. I show you this because what do you think? What do you think of what do you think about these animals? What's wrong with them? They're hungry. They're pissed off. <laughs> and hungry. And they'll tell us where his original home was. So you gotta you gotta watch. The dogs, they were pissed off and hungry. I've seen that sign on more buildings than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> but you've got to you've got to think about this because I'm telling you, I don't kind of tell me in a season class and I, I used the analogy. I said I don't care where you're from, I don't care what your economic situation is. You push a person far enough into a corner, the difference is between somebody that's got a lot of money and somebody that doesn't is how deep the corner is. You push, I've seen people from million dollar neighborhoods lose it because they just broke. And and it's an, it's it, it's so the point being is anybody can break and they do. Obviously, you know, we always blame it on lower income, they need this, but it don't matter. Person to person. Just like those dogs, they can pack up too. Um now, I say, so here's social media again. This is a very important thing. So we don't post any, we're not allowed to post anything on social media. And we don't post it for several reasons. Um, one being that you you don't, I spent 10 years in Intel, and so you don't, you don't give me information. And you don't give information out because you may become a target. And it may not be some sort of terrorist thing. It may be, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I know they got food. So we don't post stuff like that where we are. And I'll watch stuff. Where's my PIO? We post everything to the, to the press, public information officer. The problem is I run a pump. My whole purpose in life is to give out food, water, and substance. And the bad guys know who I am, they know what I'm doing, and they the know. Point of distribution is a pot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you think I'm out there running that pod and that you got another thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't we don't we don't go anywhere without after Katrina, we don't go anywhere without 
law enforcement. There's a there's in the incident command system there is emergency support functions ESFs and uh, ESF 13 is law enforcement. And there's a group of them federal and they get assigned to us and they 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 run with us and FEMA signs them to those pods and in the other thing. I know the state will too. The high patrol and the guard will get assigned to them. Um, unfortunately, people. They can be wild. Yeah. You got something they need. Need is the word. Not want. Need. They become a little more irrational. Anything else? No. Is that about right on? Yeah. Yeah. I see it on your face. <laughs> okay. That's it. Make any sense? Yeah. All right, Billy, thank you very much. Let's take about a quick 10 minute break and we'll turn it over to Dan for flat maps and such. About 10 minutes.